Hey everyone, if you're new here, my name is Jake, and today we are looking at a coding bootcamp from Coding Dojo. As someone who went to a bootcamp and graduated and became a software engineer, I think it's fun to go back and look at the curriculums from these different bootcamps and offer my feedback, any criticisms or any cool things I think they're doing, so that maybe someone who's interested in participating in one of these bootcamps has another opinion to use to decide whether they want to attend or not. Uh, keep in mind, I've never spoken to anyone from Coding Dojo or any of their students, so I'm simply reacting to the marketing material they have available on their website, which you can check out yourself at codingdojo.com. So today we are looking at the software development bootcamp on-site full-time. It looks like um, they have everything virtual at the moment, but typically they do offer on-site. Uh, it's 14 weeks long and they expect you to do about 70, 90 hours a week of work. So um, yeah, let's get into it. Before we get too far into the curriculum, this is a different course in the sense that they teach three, it's a full stack development, but they teach you three stacks at once. Um, if you're not familiar with what a stack is, a stack is generally a collection of technologies that are used to run a enterprise level application. So typically what we see is one stack being taught, but here they wanna teach three stacks which is quite ambitious. So we're gonna get into the curriculum and take a look and see what we think. So um, you can check out more at codingdojo.com. I've gone ahead and downloaded their curriculum so we can just jump in. Real quick, they, they do a day in the life here. So they talk about, they start the morning with a whiteboarding exercise and then they get into um, a, like a lecture, discussions and lecture, and then between 12 and five, they have coding labs. So that's kind of the typical day structure. So, okay, here they say, let's dive into the stacks. What does three stack mean? A stack refers to a programming language. And when we refer to full stack, we, remain, we mean you will learn every facet of the programming language. Um, I don't know if that's the right definition. That might be the right, right definition, but that's not the way I think of it. I think of a stack as a bunch of different things on top of each other. That's what a stack is, right? So a stack refers to the collection of technologies used to create an application. That's why when we talk about back end versus front end, we're talking about the front of the stack or the back of the stack. Um, however you want to look at that abstraction. So I don't know why they call a stack a single language, which I don't know if I agree with that. Okay, so we get into weeks one to two, which is programming basics. To kick off the program, you'll learn habits, computer basics, and fundamental programming concepts and skills necessary to be successful. Okay, basic computer literacy, um, algorithmic thinking, and then um, some other stuff. Okay, great. Oh, and that's all I have for weeks one to two. Okay, sorry, let's read this a little bit better. Additionally, students experience the rigor intensity of the boot camp, strengthening their cognitive processing, stamina, resiliency, and blah, 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 by the end of the course. Um, okay, so we're spending two weeks to talk about basic computer literacy. Um, I wish they put a little bit more detail into this because we have 16 weeks to learn three stacks apparently. So spending two weeks on this is interesting. Uh, I hope that this is a little bit more in depth than just basic computer literacy skills. Okay, so web fundamentals week three to four. Okay, so we have intro to HTML. Okay, that's great. We have intro to CSS, makes sense. Um, oh, and then we also talk about bootstrap. Okay, cool. Uh, Git and GitHub. jQuery, which well, there's an asterisk on this. Okay, optional topics, that's good. This is optional, because I was gonna say I would not, jQuery is unnecessary, you don't need to learn it. Responsive web design, intro to web design. I think this is something that you will want to learn. So I don't know if I would, I, I would not make this optional. So if you're someone doing this, definitely learn this. CSS frameworks, responsive typography, blah, 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 blah. And then wireframing. Yeah, wireframing is definitely optional. It's an interesting topic. I like wireframing, but it doesn't need to be in a bootcamp. So yeah, so far this is pretty standard mid road. Um, three to f So two weeks to get through this seems doable. So uh, yeah, so far this seems fine. So I think we can move on. Python, okay, so we have weeks five to eight. So we have four weeks to go through Python. Variables, data types, best practices. Okay, all that makes sense. Conditionals, yep. Uh, okay, and so now we start to talk about intro to object-oriented programming. Great, so classes, constructors, creating object instances, all of the standard stuff that would go into OOP. That's great, getting into OOP, you're gonna need to know that. Okay, test-driven development. Uh, okay, we have an asterisk on that for being optional. Yeah, I would certainly say that's optional. 
may be helpful depending on where you land in what job, but not, not required. Uh, okay, advanced Python, variable length arguments. Okay, ternary operators unit using anonymous functions. That's fine. Okay, and then we get into MySQL. Why is this in the Python? Oh, because we're doing, yeah, because we're doing full stack development. Okay, so intro to MySQL. That's great. MySQL is great. Um, intro to Flask. Okay, again, I wonder why using Flask instead of Django, but hey, whatever. And then Flask with MySQL. Uh, I feel like we're bulldozing over SQL topics. Um, I mean, I guess we do have four weeks to do this, so maybe a week or two are spent on SQL. That's good. Uh, MVC makes sense. And then deployment. I, I've spoken about this before. I don't really think deployment's necessary to go over in any sort of depth. Maybe if it's just one day, that might be fine. Uh, and then AJAX, fetching data and parsing JSON using external APIs and API keys. Okay, yeah, this seems fine. Um, so yeah, you have kind of four weeks to go over Python, MySQL, and basically building backend APIs because they don't, uh, yeah, they don't really mention how this ties in with the front end, I don't think, unless that, yeah. Um, as far as like a Python module, I think that this is fine. Um, difficult to say how much time is spent on Python and how much is spent on MySQL, but maybe we'll see some more SQL topics later. Okay, JavaScript. So this is from weeks nine to 12. So we get another four weeks to go over JavaScript. So yep, now we're learning fundamentals, conditionals. Okay, yep, so these are all the standard topics you would expect to see. Uh, OOP, okay, great. So we're spending more time on OOP, but in the context of JavaScript. Um, again, I've said this like a million times, but I would it'd be nice to learn OOP from a general stance, but seeing it in multiple contexts through different languages will give you a better understanding. Um, advanced JavaScript, callbacks, and delegating functionality and event handling. I don't know how useful callbacks would be, but I mean, at least you know what they are. Uh, intro to Node.js, um, how to use package managers, that's helpful. File system module, yeah, I feel this is gonna go into the next section where we talk about Express.js which um, and Socket.io, which I don't think are necessary topics. Also MongoDB, again, I wish this, that we spent more time on SQL instead of introducing MongoDB. There's no need to know no SQL as a beginner engineer. Um, if you have free time and you have nothing better to do, yeah, definitely check out NoSQL. It's great. I love it, but you should have a you should be spending most of your time with SQL. React is great. This is kind of what I was expecting to see. So beginning to learn React, although we're not really given a very long section on it, um, maybe cutting some time. I would prefer to cut time out of Node and ex well, maybe not Node, but cut some time out of Express.js and this socket stuff in MongoDB and focus more on React. Uh, and then again, with the deployment, we could just cut the deployment completely. Uh, and then most of those topics could be taught in four weeks. Okay, finally, Java. Uh, this is, yeah, this is like their whole three stack thing, which I'm trying not to criticize the idea of the three stack, but it does fundamentally seem weird to me um, because you're kind of duplicating domain lo logic in the sense that we already learned how to use Flask and Python to create backend APIs. Why are we relearning those things with Java? If you want to be, if you want to be a Java developer, then we should have just started with Java, because now we've now we're spending multiple weeks learning things in the same area. There's nothing wrong with knowing multiple ways to do a similar thing, because each of these have their own pros and cons. But in a limited time where we're learning, you know, complicated concepts for the very first time, it makes sense to cover one thing in each area and then really cover it conceptually well instead of duplicating. Um, so just my little spiel on that. So we get into Java fundamentals and then OOP again. Great that we're focusing on OOP from another concept from Java, um, which I think of the different OOP contexts we've studied in previously between JavaScript and Python, you'll probably see the most classical OOP in Java. Okay, and then we learned uh, advanced usage and, oh, hey, data structures. Tries, why are tries? <laughs> That's it. These are some interesting data structures they've chosen and then they've marked it as optional. I mean, I would maybe these particular, maybe a tri tries are optional, but um, the data structure section should be required. Okay, and then we get intro into spring. So, okay, this is like their backend um, framework. Great. Um, and then we do spring MVC and then we do spring security and then deployment, which I would cut again. So yeah, as far as like a Java module goes, I think that this is pretty good. Um, I think all of these things seem necessary. There's not a lot of fluff. I wish that the data structures was more pronounced, data structures and algorithms. 
And then they have an optional third stack, which is .NET. Since it's optional, I'm gonna skip it, even though I'm very familiar with .NET. Um, with the cursory glance though, this looks fine. So then we get into career services. So they have professional profile and portfolio building. These are pretty standard things. Job prospecting and application guidance. Okay, interview prep and negotiation. So mock job interviews, that's some stuff you're gonna wanna focus on. They don't have a time on this. Um, so is this something that you, I think this is something you would do after you graduate. Um, they don't mention that it's done in parallel. Okay, and then they have some other things like that. Uh, all right, so yeah, let's talk about this in general. Um, I would say from a curriculum perspective, there's certainly some things that I would drop. Um, I, and, and some things are marked optional that I think are good and some things aren't. Mostly the optional things seem optional, so that's great. I would say the data structures part in the Java module is certainly necessary. You wanna do this, just study more like classical data structures and algorithms and make that required. As far as the required sections, they have a lot of deployment sections that I would cut. And then I would also cut some of the, I would cut the MongoDB NoSQL, I would, exp I would cut the Express.js and Socket.io. And then I would probably, yeah, yeah. So those are the things I would remove or just not focus on if I was a student here. Um, and then other than that, those things that I would cut, the actual things they have included do seem pretty solid. Um, where my criticism will come in as far as the like core essential uh, curriculum is kind of along the lines of what I mentioned previously when I was talking about the duplication of domain knowledge. We have a very limited amount of time here. We have 16 weeks. It's better than you know the, um, the 12 week programs I've seen. We do at least have um, 16 full weeks, so that's great to go over you know, these big, huge topics. But that's still, in the grand scheme of learning to be a software engineer, a pretty short amount of time. And I worry that by duplicating these domain, this domain knowledge, you're losing an opportunity um, to further your understanding of one area really well while you have access to teacher resources and you're the top priority because you may have access to teacher resources after you leave this program, but while you're in the program, you're the very top priority for them and you're gonna get the most help and support. So you really wanna take advantage of that time to become you know, as adept on these concepts as you can. So if you're like learning Python really well and Python is uh, great for you and you wanna move on to Java, you know, that's fine. But I would wager a lot of people are learning Python and then they're going to JavaScript and they're still a little shaky on Python because we only had four weeks on it. And now we're going into Java when we could be spending more time on Python so that you're really comfortable with Python, you're really comfortable with JavaScript and you have a full stack app you can put together instead of having kind of like a shakier knowledge on Python and Java. So that's my main criticism. Um, even if the program is 16 weeks, maybe like a 12 week program that spends six weeks in the front end and six weeks in the back end may produce students that have a better understanding of how to put together a full stack application than a program like this that spends time jumping around. It sounds really cool to learn three stacks and maybe some people are better at some stacks than others so they use this as an opportunity to find what fits for them but I would wager that probably the vast majority of people struggle to pick up one, one kind of language and so throwing in an extra language that kind of accomplishes a similar thing as another doesn't really help the students most of the time. So that's my thought process there. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, let me know if there's any other programs you'd like me to take a review of and subscribe if you want to see more. So thanks.